strength, leadership, power, authority, guidance, patience, are God's gift to us as men. Hundreds of people give up on their goals on a daily basis. And it's usually because they realized quickly after starting their journeys that they're alone. Nobody's waking them up in the morning. Nobody's pushing them when they start to make excuses. And nobody's patting them on the back when they hit a milestone. Stop relying on outside sources of inspiration, motivation, and support to f***ing get you there. Put your goddamn head down and take charge of your f***ing life. True desire in the heart, that itch that you have, whatever it is you want to do, that thing that you want to do to help others and to, to grow and to make money, that desire, that itch, that's God's proof to you, sent beforehand already to indicate that it's yours. You can't get it because you want it. If you put in the work, they can't deny you. If you put in the work, they can't stop. Be great. Pursue your own version of happiness. Life always offers you a second chance. You know what it's called? Tomorrow. For far too long, you've been holding yourself back. It's just time for you to walk with purpose. It's time for you to walk into your gift. It's time for you to live your best life. It's wrapped in your capacity, your ability to believe in a dream even if nobody believes in you. To get something you never had, you have to do something you never did. If every time you go to better yourself, somebody hits you with a line like, why would you want to do that? You need to find another in social circle. If I'm going to fall, I don't want to fall back on anything. I want to fall forward. Figure at least this way I'll see what I'm going to hit. We did not come this far to just break down and lose now. I'm a winner. I'm going to win. You're born with a gift. If not that, then you get good at something along the way. And what you're good at, you don't take for granted. You don't betray it. What if you do betray your gift? Then you betray yourself. For far too long, you've been holding yourself back. It's just time for you to walk with purpose. It's time for you to walk into your gift. It's time for you to live your best life. We're gonna make mistakes. You gotta own them. Then you gotta make amends. And then you gotta move on. So turn the page, get off the ride. You are the author of the book of your life. Turn that page. The only person you're destined to become is the person you decide to be. When you never made a mistake, it means you never tried. If you never tried, it means you never took a chance. And if you never took a chance, you never believed in yourself, you never had faith. We need faith, you need to believe in yourself. And it doesn't matter how many times you failed. What matters is you keep getting up every day and trying again. And that's what really is important at knowing that. You know, each day you have an opportunity to change. But I want to give you a new word for change. And that word is evolution. And you are either going to evolve or expire. See, everything changes. The economy changes. Relationship changes. We change mentally and emotionally and physically. And you are either dying or you are either living. Life always offers you a second chance. You know what it's called? Tomorrow. See change as growth. See change as transformation. See change as evolution. Your history it's not your destiny. You can't get it because you want it. If you put in the work, they can't deny you. If you put in the work, they can't stop you. Don't you realize that you are enough? Don't you realize that you are special? Don't you realize you were put in for a reason? Because you were born to prosper. Be great. 
pursue your own version of happiness. It's wrapped in your capacity, your ability to believe in a dream even if nobody believes in you. It's two people born in a hospital every day. It's a person that's born in a hospital that's going to get a job and somebody born in a hospital that's going to give them a job. You get to decide which one you're going to I want you to take a long, hard look at the people you surround yourself with. You can't expect to become a millionaire when you're hanging out with drug addicts. You cannot expect to become the absolute highest level version of yourself if you surround yourself with people that never want to see you do better than them. Wake the fuck up. The goals that you want to achieve in your life are your fucking goals and nobody else's. Hundreds of people give up on their goals on a daily basis. And it's usually because they realized quickly after starting their journeys that they're alone. Nobody's waking them up in the morning. Nobody's pushing them when they start to make excuses. And nobody's patting them on the back when they hit a milestone. So whatever you want to achieve in life, Maybe it's losing a certain amount of weight to become the best version of yourself. Maybe it's building a business to provide financial freedom for your family and to travel the world. Or maybe it's just being a better father, mother, or partner for your spouse. Whatever it is, it's all on you. And the quicker you realize that nobody's going to come and hold your fucking hand through life, through this journey, the faster you will start to see success. Stop relying on outside sources of inspiration, motivation, and support to f***ing get you there. Put your goddamn head down and take charge of your f***ing life. And this shit's gonna mess with your head, but sometimes this means you need to let go of the people that you think are your closest friends. This means you might have to let go of the people that are the closest family members to you. You might have to let go of your mom, or your dad, or your brothers, or your sisters, or that best friend you've had since first grade. They might not be bad people, but you need to understand that some people just aren't meant to be in your life long term. They're not meant to help you get to the highest level of yourself. If every time you go to better yourself, somebody hits you with a line like, why would you want to do that? You need to find another f***ing social circle. You need to make a shift and surround yourself with people that challenge you to grow. You gotta surround yourself with lions. You gotta surround yourself with fucking wolves. With people that are gonna push you to be the absolute best fucking version of yourself. The people that are gonna push you to your absolute fucking breaking point. Because you can only grow when you're uncomfortable. I don't know about you, but I would much rather be a unique fucking wolf in a field full of sheep than a sheep blending in with the others. Strength, leadership, power, authority, guidance, patience, are God's gift to us as men. We have to cherish that, not abuse it. I prayed this morning to be a better listener. It didn't work so well. <laughs> it's we're human. You get back up. Yes, I've been high up on the mountain. I've been blessed. But that's a slippery slope. Yeah. And it's lonely up there. You know, people don't know that side. We did not come this far to just break down and lose now. I'm a winner. I'm going to win. True desire in the heart, that itch that you have, whatever it is you want to do, that thing that you want to do to help others and to, to grow and to make money, that desire, that itch, that's God's proof to you, sent beforehand already to indicate that it's yours. Aspire to make a difference. 
and you are what you are in this world. That's either one or two things. Either you're somebody, or you're nobody. Never give up. Without commitment, you'll never start. But more importantly, without consistency, you'll never finish. It's not easy. If it were easy, there'd be no Denzel Washington. So, keep working, keep striving, never give up, fall down seven times, get up eight. Ease is a greater threat to progress than hardship. So, keep moving, keep growing, keep learning. See you at work. When you're getting ready in the morning, when you're exercising, or when you just need a little boost, Download Mindset and listen to your favorite motivational speeches while getting ready for the day. Here we are. A new year. Another opportunity. An opportunity of a lifetime. This is the year that we said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do better. I'm gonna be stronger instead of fearful. This is my year! Today you have an opportunity to chart a new path. So do me a favor. Step into your new you. Step into your new year because success is waiting for you. And the thing you gotta ask yourself is, Am I going to repeat my history or will I blaze a new trail? Today, you have a chance to get up and attack your goals. Let this be the year of no regrets. The real you is breathing down your neck, begging you to manifest. It's got to be a lifestyle change. When you shift your paradigm, when you shift your thinking, only then what you see in your head, you will hold in your hand. Motivation has an expiration date. And when motivation dies, discipline must take its place. Because when motivation dies, you are left talking and not doing. The only way you're going to do is if discipline takes the place of your motivation. This is your year. Because you are still in it. Get to work! Some of you don't even realize you have unfinished business. You need to go back where you left off with a new perspective. Go back to the gym. Go back to the drawing board. Go back to the business. Go back to the relationship. Go back to the burning building. You have unfinished business. All you gotta do is show up with a new game plan and a new perspective. You gotta finish business. You have unfinished business. You got work to do. Perspective is everything. Let's go. I need you to hear me loud and clear. How you see this thing is everything. You cannot change the past, but you can change your perspective about it. You gotta see this thing differently. Stop complaining about the divorce. Stop complaining about the job loss. Stop complaining about the relocation. Your viewpoint is your advantage. Thank you for breaking up with me. Here's what you did. You opened up another opportunity for somebody else to come into my life. Thank you for firing me. You gave me an opportunity to explore entrepreneurship. I'm not bitter, I'm better. Perspective is what changes the game. Everybody wants increase and, and abundance and lifestyle change and new zip codes and new area codes, but you only read once a week and you only work out once or twice a month. And so the, the reason why you don't have what it is that you see, the reason why what's in your head 
it's not in your hands, it's not your reality, it's because your perspective opposes your potential. You don't have it because you don't see the value in it. If you believe you've been called to be the difference maker, the game changer, the disruptor, the person that comes into a room and commands the atmosphere. If you believe you've been called to be necessary and not grossly irrelevant, then everything you do, everything you see, everything rises and falls on your perspective, your perception, your viewpoint. How do you see this thing? What happens when your perspective your perception diametrically opposes your reality if you are going to give and grow and evolve and attain and become everything rises and falls on your viewpoint show me somebody that hates to work out and I'll show you a man that almost lost his life and the doctor said if you don't work out you'll die one sees it as cumbersome one sees it as a problem another one sees it as a privilege he sees it as his second chance, his new lease on life, that I have to work out, I get to work out, I get a chance to live a little longer. So one person sees the gym as a prison, and another person sees the gym as a passport. One man came within inches of losing his life, and another man has never come within a hundred miles of losing his life, and he only works out twice a month, and somebody else works out four or five times a week, the reason why you only do it once or twice a month is because you don't see the value. Your viewpoint is either your advantage or your assassin. Your viewpoint will either get you going or get you killed. These people that you're comparing yourself to, you don't really know very well. What that means is that you see their shiny outside, but you don't see the reality of their life. There's always people out there who are doing far better than you on pretty much anything you yeah. want to imagine. And if all you're doing is seeing yourself in their reflected light, let's say, then it's going to be pretty damn dismal. But it's not a good comparison because, well, first of all, there's danger in just comparing yourself to others, period, because they're not you and God only knows what struggles they had to undertake to get to where they were or what burdens they're currently carrying that you're not aware of. But you can certainly contrast yourself with yourself. And that's a lot better. It is the only way. Well, it's also the only way of really, of really measuring anything approximating proper improvement. You can actually tell when you're a little better than you were yesterday. Right. And, and you can actually do that. That's another thing that's so interesting about it is that you can actually make yourself a little better in some way Pretty much, well, I don't know if it's at every moment, but you can certainly do it every day. Be careful who you share good news with, because you want to share good news with people who are going to be genuinely happy for you. And be careful who you share bad news with, because that's equally tricky. You want someone who will listen to you when you're having trouble and allow you your grief. Beauty calls people to their higher being, I would say, and to make friends with beauty is to introduce yourself very carefully to one of the mysteries of life that make it worth living. There's never been a better time for the majority of people to be alive. And the future, although we're vulnerable and terrible things can always happen to us, it's hard to make a case that the future doesn't look comparatively positive. We're becoming extremely technologically sophisticated and the world is changing at an incredibly rapid rate and the only way we're going to be able to manage that in a positive way is if each of us or as many of us as possible are capable of making wise and careful and truthful decisions and if we do that then maybe things can continue to improve you don't get people to stand up on their own two feet and to adopt responsibility if everything is given to them and that that's that's a real conundrum Imagine you're 90 years old, sitting in your rocking chair, looking back at your life. Do you think you'll have any regrets? If you continue living the way that you're living right now, will you truly be fulfilled when it's all over? 
If the answer is no, then ask yourself why? Why would anyone reject the calling to become what they believe they have the potential to be? Because we limit ourselves in an effort to avoid fear, failure, discomfort, or any sort of pain we think we'll experience. So we build this prevention machine designed to protect us from having to struggle. Destroy this machine. Destroy the part of yourself that's stopping you from living the incredible life you're capable of creating. Feel the pain that is holding you back. Feel it making you stronger. And when that voice in your head says your pursuit is far-fetched, too difficult, too risky, impossible, Tell it that it's okay if you think it can't be done. Just don't distract me while I do it. Don't allow the prevention machine to trick you into believing that if you keep it running, then it will be easy. It's not easy to settle for less when you know you're capable of more. To be bored out of your mind, sitting at a desk waiting for the weekend to come. It's not easy to retreat, to ignore the path you know you need to take. Never give up on something you can't go a day without thinking about. We all go through that, not doing the thing we know we need to do and instead taking the safer path that has a reward visible at the end. But that's not your path. Yours is the crazy looking trail on the edge of a cliff with giant gaps and no end in sight. Go there. Go where you have less comfort and security, but more passion and possibility. And the more vulnerable you feel, the weaker the machine becomes until it breaks down completely. There's a certain freedom in that. The kind that comes from knowing that whatever force tries to stop you has no chance. Knowing that you're giving life everything you have. Knowing that you're becoming all that you could be. You'll wake up excited every day with one mission. Break walls and build bridges towards the most enlivening pursuit you can dream of. Aren't you tired of wondering what you're truly capable of? Find out. And when you're 90 years old, sitting in your rocking chair, looking back at your life, you'll be proud of the person you've become. When you settle, you ruin the movie. Yeah, you heard me. Your life is a movie and you are the author. Your life is a movie and you are the director. Life is a movie. And you need to edit some scenes out. The pen is in your hand, my friend, and you're writing your very own personal movie. And I believe the good guy wins in the end. I believe the good woman wins in the end. I believe that you will win in the end as long as you don't settle. When you settle, you ruin the finale. When you settle, you ruin the final scene. We are all tuned into your movie. We got our popcorn ready, waiting for your grand finale. How is your movie going to end? As long as there is breath in your body, there is a chance. Sometimes discouragement happens. Sometimes fatigue happens. But one thing I know about life, when you get tired, you got to wait for that second win. When that second win kicks in, whoa, you might be tired right now, but that second win is kicking in. I came here right now today to be your second win, and don't you ever settle. Why? Because I don't want you to have regrets. You've got to rise above how you feel. It's going to be up to you to take authority over your mind and your emotions. And a lot of times we get frustrated because things seem to be moving too slowly. And when that happens, we start to question whether or not what we really want will ever happen for us. Well, it will happen if you refuse to allow fear and impatience to deprive you of what you deserve. It 
will happen if you don't allow moments of frustration to guide your decisions. Think about all the people you know in life that said, man, I, I, I wish I didn't quit on school. I, I hate I dropped out. I wish I didn't get divorced. I hate I gave up. I wish I didn't quit the football team because I could have been in the NFL. I, I, I wish I, I wish I, I, I wish I didn't quit. I wish I acted better. I wish I didn't get kicked out of school. I wish I didn't give up on my kid. I wish, I wish, I wish that is regret. Never said there's still time, never settle, there's still time. What are you working on right now? Because sometimes in life, all you got is that one thing. God gave you one thing to do, that's all you got is that one thing. I know life will knock you down. I know life can be tough, but you are on a journey. When you settle, you will always have regret on what could have been, what should have been. I'm going to say these two powerful words one more time. And I want you to hear me and get them in your spirit. Never settle.